um, Major General, thanks for being with us. And um, you are the head of the Ukrainian side of Joint Coordination and Control Ceasefire Center. So can you explain at this stage, we're hearing different kind of news, reading to the OAC and the other reports, winter 2016. How can we describe the situation with the fire, with the ceasefire and the violation of the ceasefire in the front line? I would describe it as uh, stable and under control with some intention to uh, escalation or de-escalation depending on political events, negotiations, means meeting and uh, so on. What it means uh, and uh, what, what, da what damage is done, how can, how can we describe for the uh, civilians and for the military? I can uh, tell you just a few figures that uh, during November around 300 tons of uh, different ammunitions were shot down on Ukrainian uh, positions and Ukrainian uh, villages and cities where Ukrainian people uh, live. We, uh, we documented a lot of uh, damage to infrastructure as well, which also uh, influenced humanitarian situation in the area. So uh, every day we understand that there are going supplies from Russia to through Russia-Ukraine border, which is not under control now. It's around 400 kilometers of non-controlled uh, border. Particularly uh, daily, we have a few Ukrainian soldiers uh, wounded, sometimes killed in action. But the most uh, dangerous fact happened yesterday, when uh, one civilian was killed and one civilian was injured during a shooting which happened on the checkpoint, border cross point, on the uh, contact line in uh, Mayorsk, uh, Zaitseva. We have some uh, Ukrainian soldiers uh, wounded. There are cases and the Ukrainian side is answering. How would you, what would you say on that? That say, the both sides are to different level, to different extents, but they are violating. Uh, I am not going to say that Ukrainian side is violating. First of all, Ukrainian side uh, uh, doesn't use weapons which prohibited uh, by Minsk agreement. But at the same time, every commander on the contact line can decide how to respond. And uh, the level of response it should be adequate to the level of attack, especially when it comes to the danger of life of our soldiers, of our citizens, or danger to attack uh, new territories. Um, so what kind of, with what kind of weapon the Ukrainian army in that case? We, we uh, in response, we use uh, adequate uh, weapons. Which is probably com 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 very confusing and complex for some of our viewers, but, but still, if you can explain. Mostly, we use weapons which are not prohibited by, by Minsk. Uh, so we don't use heavy artillery systems, but uh, we use uh, small arms, light weapons, automatic grenade launchers, this type of weapon. Uh, if we sp so can you really explain, like, is there any, like, one single day when, within this long term, where we can say that, oh, that day was peaceful? Yes, uh, I, I remember during my two times of deployment in the area, I remember few such days. Was, uh, end of August uh, 2015 and beginning of September 2015 and one day this year, 1st of September this year. This day we did not uh, notice any ceasefire violations. So in which areas it's probably the most dangerous for the people to live and which are under the, you know, what are the hot spots? The main hot spots, uh, they are the same during the last uh, two years. First of all, it's uh, Mariupol area, it's uh, Shirokina, Bezimena, this area. Uh, then uh, Avdeevka, Yasinovata, this uh, direction, Marienka, Krasnogorovka, Zaitseva, Mayorsk. Yes. Are there many people living? And, you know, like if they are still there, how? Well, if you take Zaitseva, Mayorsk, close to that area, we have uh, Tretsk, which is around 50,000. And we have, last couple of weeks, we have problem with water supply over there. When water pipe was damaged and water pipe was located in the gray zone and it took us uh, around a week to receive security guarantees 
from the Russian side to make some uh, restoration uh, works over there. So it's 50,000 only in Taretsk. But this area, as you may know, densely populated. Of course, many people uh, left the area, but still a lot of people there. If we speak about the withdrawal of the heavy weapon and of the weapon, what are the major tasks at this stage? How successful is this part of the, or unsuccessful this part of the uh, Minsk negotiations? Uh, you know, when we, uh, every day we have some uh, shootings with uh, prohibited weapons, it means that these weapons are not uh, withdrawn, at least many of them, and we rely on OEC patrols to verify this. On a daily basis, we provide OEC uh, specific coordinates and specific areas where our intelligence uh, found uh, not withdrawn weapons. Deep politically, there are a lot of people in Ukraine, and not just in Ukraine, who uh, dismiss the idea of the Minsk agreement as something which is not workable, which couldn't be reached. Uh, you're working on the place, and that's somebody who sees what's happening on the ground. What would you say on that, that like the, the chances that it's, it's not working? Well, in my current uh, capacity, I worked as a tool of Minsk agreement. So the main task of a joint ceasefire control and coordination center was to implement Minsk agreement. And this was the main task uh, and my job, which I was doing. So uh, I am not in position to criticize or be in favor of Minsk agreement. I am not commenting them. I am just uh, trying to implement uh, them. Of course, many people can uh, criticize or can uh, say some, uh, appreciate them, whatever. But we have them and we have to implement. Do you think there is another way to deal with that? Another tool could be used uh, well, at this uh, stage of the conflict? To my mind, any tool we use then point number one will be ceasefire. Or it means agreement called it uh, whatever. But to solve the conflict, if we look in history, every, every conflict or solution of the conflict should start with ceasefire. We don't have ceasefire yet now. So any tool we can invent will start from the ceasefire. I believe that uh, solution of this conflict should be as we say, uh, com should be comprehensive approach, both uh, diplomatic, uh, political, economical, and then military. So it should be comprehensive approach. There is the Russian general on the place, and um, it works, we reported about that, but what kind of communication is that? Well, uh, indeed, in uh, Solidar, we have a uh, joint center headquarters, where we have a Russian general, a Ukrainian general, and of course a Russian team and a Ukrainian team. We have a situation room where we have 24-7, three Russian and three Ukrainian officers. They try to solve uh, these ceasefire violations. But the main problem is that uh, in Joint Center, Ukrainian side clearly understands that we are side of conflict. And uh, we believe that Russia is side of conflict as well. But the uh, Russian side never recognized them, that they reject all uh, tokens about that their side of the conflict. They reject all accusations that they support and supply uh, representatives of uh, Donetsk and Lugansk areas by weapons, mercenaries, ammunition, whatever. So they always reject this. So uh, we tried to find solution to stop ceasefire violations and we interact uh, particular in this area without any political discussions if we go into political discussions we became very emotional non-diplomatic as well but uh, we have clear task to uh, monitor uh, ceasefire violations to report about this and to take measures uh, to stop them what we are doing and uh, with this purpose, we are talking to the Russian side. And um, at this stage, how we can say, what are the major tasks at this moment? Because of course it's a ceasefire, of course it's withdrawal, uh, but if you meet, for instance, with OSC, with somebody else, there is probably a task for day one, two, three. Uh, of course, crisis management is a joint venture. We work very close with uh, SMM OSCE and we conduct daily briefings in the center. 
where we brief uh, OECE team on what's going on and we coordinate our activities, especially, for example, when we need to do some restoration or renovation uh, works. Still, there are a lot of unsolved problems which can create humanitarian or ecological uh, what are they, problems. for instance, uh, for, 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 for the recent example, future? For example, there are still three uh, places where situation not solved from humanitarian or ecological point of view. It's uh, Bakhmutsky Agrar Agrarny Soyuz, which is agricultural factory which produce pork. There are a lot of uh, waste which uh, should be disposed but uh, should, uh, a lot of areas are mined, so it should be uh, mine clearing should be done. For this, we need for our engineers to do demining. We need security guarantees from other side. Unfortunately, during the last few months, we cannot receive these security guarantees. Another area is um, one chemical, or phenolic chemical uh, factory in the Novgorodskaya. In this also danger of uh, poisoning of soil and water with some chemicals. And we need to do some restoration uh, works over there. Unfortunately, we still didn't receive security guarantees. And the third one is gas pipe uh, and gas pumping station in Krasnogorovka, Marienka, that area, because people are now suffering without heating and it's winter time. We still, during the last three months, we cannot receive security guarantees from Russian side and without any explanation. So this is the three main uh, problematic areas from humanitarian point of view. But of course, uh, within area, we have a lot of uh, problems and every day when he, we have damage of some infrastructure, we try to coordinate with Russian side and with OECE. Sometimes Red Cross uh, involved as well, just to uh, provide ceasefire or security guarantees on these particular areas to make some works. Uh, now, we would have soon the Christmas and New Year holidays during these times. I mean, if you to remember, do we have the situation calmer? What are the concerns? Because people would travel more, people would like to meet the families, and you know, this is a still a particular time. Uh, it is very difficult to predict because many activities of other side are absolutely unpredictable. And uh, even when we have agreement to stop fire, sometimes it doesn't happen. So uh, it's, it will be very difficult for me to predict. But the uh, Ukrainian side will try to talk again and again, at least during Christmas holidays, to give people opportunity to travel to see their relatives. With this, we also uh, maybe improve the work of uh, checkpoints border crossing, uh, contact line crossing uh, points and more people maybe can uh, travel. And uh, we're talking a lot about how the OSC mission could be modified. We, there are other talks about the possibility of the police uh, mission or other things. How do you think it could work? As, as we say in military, the biggest room in the armed forces is room for improvement. But uh, anyhow, OSC and especially SMM uh, OEC mission, it's very important for crisis management in the area. Of course, we would like to have them more, to have uh, them working 24-7. Uh, unfortunately, they have their mandate uh, due to security reasons. Patrols are working only during day time. But also, there is another uh, area where we can improve. First of all, to increase the usage of some technical means of observation, like cameras, UAVs. At this moment, we have cameras in uh, Shirokina, Avdeevka, uh, Stanitsa Lugansk, in this disengagement area, Stanitsa Luganska, Zolote Petrivsky. But also, it is possible to increase these technical means to observe and to inform uh, public uh, what's going on, who is really violating the ceasefire. Uh, you know, t talking about some another type of mission, it uh, more this issue it's more in political area. I believe that with political will, everything can be real. 